Hello and welcome to The Buzz. We have reached state championship week, the final week of the season. There's one team from the Daily News coverage area that actually qualified for a championship game, and that's Stewart in Class D2. Stewart's a bit of a Cinderella. I don't have a glass slipper, but I do have a sparkly golden high heel that I stole out of my daughter's closet because I like to snoop. Teenage girls love that. Alex Coons ran for 131 yards, threw for 94 yards as Stewart won 30 to eight to reach their first ever state football championship game. Interestingly enough, Stewart hadn't, as a school, been to a state championship game in any sport since 1993, back in the Darcy Strikey era of high school basketball. And just last week, their volleyball team qualified for the state finals. So two in a week, Stewart's buzzing. In the championship game, the Broncos are gonna meet Fall City Sacred Heart. Fall City Sacred Heart has a, an offense that is as productive as the Keebler Elves during the holiday season. And a lot of that has to do with Chaz Dunn. Chaz Dunn is a big reason that they defeated Why Not 61 to 44 in their semifinal. They got up 20 to nothing early, but the Blue Devils, as they've done all season, just kept battling. They actually cut the lead to 40 to 32 at halftime, but Chaz Dunn said, we ain't done. Helped them pull away in the second half of that 61 to 44 win. Now for Why Not, Jackson Sudbeck uh, capped off a pretty stellar career with six touchdown passes. I got a Twitter message about this game from Lucas Freshel. I hope I pronounced your name right. He's actually from Fall City, so I hope you're watching Lucas in Fall City. The first championship game for Sacred Heart since 1994, which capped a run of six in a row for Sacred Heart. And why not? Had beaten Sacred Heart in the last two years at the uh, state basketball tournament, so it was a little bit of a revenge game for the Irish. Now there were three other teams that were playing for state championship appearances, didn't quite make it in class D1. Creighton fell a little bit short. Their high-powered offense that had averaged 70 points a game coming into their semifinal with Exeter Milligan was actually held to eight. The tandem of James Luca and Kyle Jensen ran for over 200 yards and defensively the Timberwolves, Timberwolves, were able to wrap up Creighton anytime they tried to break away. Jacob Morrill held under the 100 yard mark, still finishes quite a career. The first ever running back in our area, third in the state, to have four 1,000 yard rushing seasons. Creighton finishes the year 11 and 1. In Class C1, Boone Central Newman Grove had been the number one team in the state since they knocked off Norfolk Catholic early on. Everybody kind of assumed going into the playoffs that they were the team to beat. Everybody assumed wrong because Kozad is a sensational football team. Boone Central coach Arnie Johnson had nothing but praise for them after they defeated his Cardinals 35 to 7. So we've played some really tough competition, and, and they really just simply move the ball on us consistently. We have high expectations. I mean, our expectation was win state championship. That was simply the, the way it was going to be. So we're going to feel bad right now, but the effort that we gave to get us to this point is going to help us and help every one of them for the future. Boone Central Newman Grove was hindered a little bit as their uh, dual threat quarterback Wyatt Mazur was injured. He had his ankle stepped on early in the second quarter, never really was himself. Here's a kid who's run for over 100 yards, passed for over 100 yards each game out, and uh, he just wasn't able to get that offense going. And, and Kozad does have quite a defense, which made it even more difficult. The other team vying for a spot in a state championship game was Battle Creek in Class C2. The Braves were hosting Donovan Trumbull and they found out just why Donovan Trumbull hasn't been beaten on the season. Still, Battle Creek concludes the year 11-1. I think they exceeded the expectations that most people around the state had for them. And I think they might have people thinking that Battle Creek football is arriving back at its glory years. Until then, and until you wrap up your macaroni in a plate of cheese that you lost in 1963 when Senator Ben Nelson went to Congress to look for his apple pie that his mom had stolen from his dog's aunt. I'm Tom Beamer for The Buzz.